Hey everyone, how's it going? My name's Adam Ripples Box, and I'm here today with a YouTube tip. Anthony Smith over on the Freedom Central channel is running a series of challenges for Freedom Partners and YouTubers in general to complete, to up their game, and to just try out different formats. And one of those, he's going by hashtag teach me, and he wants people to make a YouTube tip. They want to put together a YouTube tip video. So I want to share a YouTube tip of my own that I have that I've learned over my many, many years here on YouTube. And my my one YouTube tip that I, if I could tell anyone, would be fill a gap. Fill a hole in the YouTube space, in the YouTube sphere, where you feel content is lacking. Now, typically people will tell you to be yourself and you, everything will fall together or just do what you love or do best. That's not always going to bring you success at all. Those are good things to always keep in mind, but that's not good success. You doing what you do in a sea of everybody doing the exact same thing is not necessarily going to bring you the most success here on YouTube. What will bring you success, almost guaranteed, as long as you're doing it in a quality fashion, stay determined, and just stick with it, is filling gaps where content is needed or variances of content is needed. So a couple questions you can ask yourself to get started into figuring this out is what do you look for in YouTube videos that you're not getting in the YouTube videos that you watch? This can all apply to specifically content types or like specific content or just the way that you portray yourself in a video or your personality or the lengths of video. Let's say that you really like C. Nanners' Gary's Mod Reaction Cam videos, but you'd prefer them to be longer instead of three minutes. And you're not really seeing anything specifically like that. I'm not saying to go down that route, I'm just trying to pull up examples off of my head. Then you make longer videos like that. Say you want to see more tutorials on a specific set of software in the YouTube community that you're not finding. Now, if you don't know the software, obviously don't go make a tutorial on software you don't understand. Nothing drives me more nuts than people who make a tutorial on a program that they clearly don't understand themselves. But if you make it and you just want to see more people interacting on videos related to that software, it's a really good idea for you to start that up. And you can develop a following by being one of the first people to make videos on that software. Because if you're looking for it, other people are going to be looking for it too. So keep that in mind. If you're looking for something in the YouTube sphere that could, and it's something that you can contribute to, that's something you should probably make a video on. And same thing with personality variances. This is a silly example, but I've seen it in a couple areas. Say you generalize that most YouTubers in a certain content cate category, say like Call of Duty YouTubers, and I'm just using this as an example. I'm not actually saying anything here, but say to you, most good Call of Duty YouTubers are jerks or they don't talk to their fans right or something like that. Well, when you're setting up a Call of Duty channel, make sure you check those marks off the list of things that you do with your channel that you wanted to see other people have done that they haven't. So this way, if you're already making a channel for a specific set of content, you know, you already know what you need to do. You just need to think about it in that way of what don't I like that other YouTubers do and how can I make that better and then apply that to your channel. That way you're not just suddenly changing direction to go after this content type. If you're already dedicated to a content type, you can simply improve that by thinking about what you don't like that other YouTubers do or what you would prefer them to do and do that yourself because you're the YouTuber. You have the power to change that community. It, it, it's extremely hard especially as just basically as every minute goes by and thousands of more videos are uploaded it's very hard to get noticed and be successful making the same kinds of content that everybody else is making the way you're going to be successful is by making content that other people aren't making and specifically filling in gaps of what people want the entrepreneurial types call this adding value or creating value for your audience and that's what you need to be doing you need to be creating value you need to be doing something that they're not getting elsewhere because if you create value in a way that your potential audience isn't getting elsewhere they're immediately going to flock to you and they're going to rely on you for that content for that value for that information immediately and it it can be pretty impressive how strong that reaction can be as long as you're creating the right value in the right circumstances so really really keep that in mind it sounds super basic but you you can honestly take that idea and run with it so far 
as long as you really keep that at the core of your values of what you're hoping to do here on YouTube. I hope this video has been helpful to you. Sorry I ranted on a little bit. I just wanted to do this hashtag teach me video for Anthony's little challenge here and share a YouTube tip that I've learned that I'm still working on myself and share it with you guys. My name has been Adam Ripple's Vox and I'm no longer manager of Geek. Powered by Freedom. No! How do I do an outro? I'm Adam, manager here at Freedom. Like, subscribe, comments please. <laughs> Originally bundled with Microsoft Plus 95, it was included with Windows through Windows XP, Windows 98, Windows ME, and Windows 2000. Despite its limited functionality and restricted 640x480 resolution, I spent many hours playing that game as a kid.